And uh, I think it was a good message, and <clears throat> you may want to have a copy and send it to somebody else. And, you know, uh, I'm certainly going to send a copy to Joey. <clears throat> he's down in, he's incarcerated for now, but uh, he, he, he told me, send me anything you can, Pastor. So let's believe God. This morning, I'm going to invite you to turn to Ephesians chapter 2. And I want to talk about faith and grace. Faith and grace go together. <clears throat> and when I say grace, I don't mean the lady down the street. I mean the grace of God. The grace of God. In Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, <clears throat> I want us to read there a couple of verses. Get there so you can underscore it. And uh, I know it'll help you in your spiritual walk. <clears throat> it reads, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now, I want you to pay attention that in verse 8, both words that I'm talking about are in that first line. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is what? A gift of God. Also, make a note of Romans uh, 3.24. You can look it up later. But it simply says, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. It is Christ Jesus who justifies. <clears throat> he is a redeemer. He paid the price for us. Therefore, his grace is sufficient for any one of us. You can open your life to God this morning and he will fill it with his grace and with his love. Our salvation comes <clears throat> as a gift of God's grace and it is appropriated by the response of faith. That's why it's important to have faith. <clears throat> faith is not just a, a term. There's something very powerful in the word of God and in relationship to our our walk with God. To truly understand, understand the process of salvation, we must then understand <clears throat> two words. At least I believe two words. The first one is saving faith. You have to recognize that faith in Jesus Christ is God's requirement for receiving his free gift of salvation. Saving faith. God has given every man a measure of faith. Otherwise we wouldn't be able to be saved. Even at that. Some use it. Some don't. Some ignore it. Some forget it. Some don't care. How many of you believe that everybody can be saved? Yes. yes the Bible says that Jesus Christ died for the sins of the whole world. So it's taken care of. It's paid. Oh, if every sinner knew this morning that their account has been paid, all they have to do is step up and claim it. I was hearing a man say the other day on television that there are millions and millions of money, uh, but people just don't claim it. I wish I... I wish my name was there. <clears throat> And you can go, you can Google some kind of, uh, I don't know what it is, but there's some, some, uh, where you can go and say, do I have, do I, do you have any money for so and so? Uh, I, somebody told me about that and they did it and they got like $400. <clears throat> you never know who might have left you some money or who owes you money or who took too much from you and they didn't know how to get it back to you. And there is, believe me, millions and millions of dollars there. You see, faith is what we believe about the Lord Jesus Christ. And also our heart's response of trust. In other words, it is what causes us to follow him as Lord and Savior. Why do people give up so easily in following Jesus? Because their love waxes cold. Their love just yeah. In the parable of Matthew 13 of the sower and the seed, <clears throat> some seed fell among thorns and rocks and the highways and all that. 
<clears throat> only that seed which fell upon good soil. So, so oftentimes that is the exception. The gospel is going all over the world by mail, the printed word, uh, uh, every every means of all social media and everything else. But yet people are not running <clears throat> to get saved or to go to church to get right with God. They mention in the government, they even have prayer in Congress. Our president is always blessing America and blessing the people. And <clears throat> sometimes he sounds like a pope, you know. I don't even know if he's really saved himself. But, you know, thank God we live in a country where God is kept forefront. Not everybody has to be a Christian like we are. But people need to believe and acknowledge the existence of an almighty God. Can you say amen? So the New Testament conception of faith includes four elements. The way I see it. And I want you to follow me closely. Because first of all, faith means believing and trusting in the crucified and risen Christ. And you need to confess him as your personal Lord and Savior. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, If thou can confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So it's important that you have this. You want to get saved this morning? Confess the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and follow Him. Jesus said, if any man come after me, let him deny himself, pick up his cross and follow me. That's not hard, is it? As a matter of fact, I think we better read it. Look at Luke chapter 9. Please work with me. Otherwise, it's going to be a long morning. Luke 9. Let's begin in verse, I think it's around verse 23. If you're there, say amen. And he said unto them all, to how many? To all. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whoever will lose it, lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. For what is a man advantage, or what is a man profit, if he gains the whole world, and what? Lose himself, or be a castaway, rejected. So there is the, there's the idea. There is the, uh, the, uh, overriding principle that in order to be saved, you have to get acquainted with Christ. You have to welcome Him. You have to recognize Him for who He is and what He is, and also the claims that He made. A lot of people put Jesus in their little basket like, you know, <clears throat> like band-aids in case they need Him or whenever they need Him. But uh, He needs to be Lord and Savior of our lives. That's what the Bible teaches Romans 1.17 says, For there is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. So this faith of ours is meant to increase and grow. The righteous person continues to live by faith, and in so doing grows from one level of maturity to another. That's the problem we have in the church today, is we have a lot of babies. A lot of carnal babies, a lot of, you know, underdeveloped Christians. Because they don't continue, they don't discipline themselves. Somebody asked me, well, why do Christians so easily give up and they stop really serving God and and being excited about Him? Well, because, you know, they just, uh, basically it's commitment, first of all. And uh, secondly, is that they haven't grown. There was even a group of people that Paul spoke to and said, you know, I can't speak to you as mature people because you're still babies. He made the distinction that milk is for babies and solid food is for mature individuals. So again, when we consider our lives and our walk with God, it should mature. Hopefully those of you that are younger than me 
will mature as time goes by. I hope that 30 years from now you're still not acting like the same old teeny, teeny bopper that you were before. That you grow up and get some maturity, get some sense into you. That you show that you have matured. I mean, this, this can be called spiritual progress along the path of righteousness. And that's what we like to see in the churches. We preach, we teach, we do all this Bible study, we have all these Bibles, all these helps, all these things, and yet the people are so, so immature. How come you're not going to church anymore? Man, because the pastor said that I had to tithe. Or some nonsense. Or the usher didn't shake my hand Sunday. He shook everybody's but me. He just ignored me. I do. You know what I mean? We, 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 we think of these ideas and things that have nothing to do. It's Christ whom we serve. I hope you don't come here just to show off or to punch a card or, or to let me know you're whatever. I, it's Jesus whom you're going to answer one day. I'm just here to try to keep you saved. In the Sunday school teachers meeting this morning at prayer time, I asked Brother Art Garcia to pray. Now, you know, he's been gone from church for two weeks. I want to find out if he's still saved. <laughs> you know, sometimes people go on vacation, throw their devotion to Christ and everything out the window, and all they do is, is just do whatever. Don't you know that Jesus is with you when you go on vacation? He's watching you. He sees what you're doing. You don't have to put it on Facebook. He, he can see you. Hello. I mean, I'm trying to make this as easy as I can. But you know what I mean? You know what the world wants to see? They want to see some real Christians. People that are willing to pay the price that, that do what they say and, and mean what they say and, and live what they confess. Amen. Too much wishy washiness in the, in the church. Amen. You know, people tell me, well, oh, Pastor John, I don't go to church because it's full of hypocrites. Well, usually I tell them, well, we got room for one more. <laughs> I mean, I try to make it as easy as I can, but folks, you know, if you don't believe me, you come out next time they go out in the streets. And I believe a bunch of you should. If the Jehovah Witnesses can do it, you can do it. You got the real thing. Amen? Get with it. Your, your faith is, 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 is got to grow and you got to get it a job because it's, it's a faith that works. You know, like I tell you about love. Love can do you no good until you give it away. So let's do it. Let's just do it. The righteous person continues to live by faith and in so doing grows from one level of maturity to another. I wanted to emphasize that. It involves believing with all your heart and yielding up your wills and committing your total selves to Jesus Christ. As he is revealed in the New Testament. You know, Jesus didn't come to do a halfway job, folks. He did it all. Therefore, on the cross, he could say, it is finished. He accomplished what his father gave him to do. He never allowed anything to bear him off the path to, you know, get his attention, got to involve over here on this thing or the other. He followed the Lord. And the cross was always before him. Faith involves repentance. Say it with me. Faith well, say it like you mean it. Faith in all. That's right. This means in the, uh, I guess, it means it involves true sorrow in turning from sin. Second Corinthians 7, 10, if you're taking notes, says, For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation. I think sometimes people also are, are not faithful to the Lord because they don't feel that bad about their sins. When I think how Jesus loved me, how he waited patiently, when I turned my back and walked away, I mean, when I think of those things and I think how long he waited for me, when I think of all the times that I, I did so much wrong, uh, and, and, the, all, and, and yet he loved me, I, I mean, folks, how can I 
serve him half hearted. He gave it all. And when I was in the world, I gave it all too. Thank God I didn't get killed or wasted out there, but I almost did. I came close to it. But thank God, God's grace delivered me, saved me. And I thank him every day. I was thanking him this morning in my prayer life. I was thanking him saying, Lord, thank you for saving me. Thank you for delivering me, God. Thank you for rescuing me. Hallelujah. You should be happy that God saved you, that God met you, that he encountered you, that he sought you and he found you and brought you to himself. That's enough to make you want to shout. Some of you are not saying much, but well, that's between you and God. But I know I'm preaching better than you look. (laughs) Saving faith is always a repentant faith. Repentance is a free decision on the part of sinners and is made possible by enabling, by the enabling grace of God that He gives to them as they hear and believe the gospel. This morning, if you're not saved, let me tell you, Jesus loves you, first of all. Secondly, Jesus died for your sins. You can be forgiven of everything you've ever done and begin a new life today by simply trusting in Jesus and accepting Him for who He is. Repentance is a free decision. Nobody's going to force you to do that, my friend. Jesus said, whosoever, let him come. To repent, to repent means basically to change your mind. But not superficially, but changing your basic attitudes and lifestyle. Uh, it involves a change of masters. We used to serve the devil. Now we serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We used to be subjects to sin and everything in the world. Now, <clears throat> amen. I said to Joey, Joey, you break my heart, Joey. This is not what I believe God had for you. And now I said, son, you're facing some longer time. You didn't have to, man. I was working hard for you. I love you, man. And I know God could do the miracle because I can see myself in you. God can, if you would have trusted Him, He can deliver you from any crime, any sin, any addiction. I believe that with all my heart. I said, and my heart is broken. I said, well, Pastor, I call you because I wonder if you would forgive me. I go, son, I said, I forgive you. I don't have nothing against you. It is God's forgiveness that you need. You need to come to Him. If you would have listened, you wouldn't be in this mess today. Well, praise God. It also involves a change of direction. You were going this way, you make a 180, and you're going this way now. You were on your way to hell, now on your way to heaven. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, faith then includes uh, obedience to Jesus Christ and His Word as evidence in a life inspired by our faith, full of gratitude. That's important. And thanksgiving to God for his uncomfortable gift. You don't realize what God has given you. (laughs) You don't realize what God has given us when he says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish in everlasting life. You don't know. Until that day when he appears, you go, Ay, Dios mío. Why not uncles or whatever you're going to say, but you're going to be amazed on what God's going to, oh my Lord, this is what it was. Oh yeah, it's more than pie in the sky, friend. There's a real God in a real heaven, full of angels, full of power, full of glory. One day we're going to be there, hallelujah. Oh, praise God. I can hardly wait. I wish it was this morning. Ay, ay, ay. Isn't God good? <clears throat> Hmm. Hebrews 5, 8 and 9 Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation. Glory to God. Unto all them, now listen, that obey him. Now there's a lot of people that think that they're in with God like they're in with Flint. But let me tell you something. 
You're not even with God until you're doing what he tells you to do. Until you're being obedient. I wouldn't have a son if he didn't do what I tell him to do. And the day he stopped, he left home. And then one for my daughters too. And then one for my wife too. Thank God she had a change of heart and decided she was in love with me. <clears throat> and that was the best thing ever happened to her. Well, listen, I brought salvation. God delivered me. She didn't know nothing about being saved and being a child of God. She was stuck over there in that religious thing and that, you know, whatever, you know, that Catholic business. I don't mean to insult anybody, but I'm telling you. Pobrecita, mija. But when Jesus came into my heart, oh, what a joy. Since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus came into my heart, was a joy over my soul, like a little flow. Since Jesus came into my heart. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. That's the way we used to sing it when we were kids. <clears throat> they used to have this, hold that note. That's how you learn to sing. That's how you get your lungs full of whatever. Hot air or whatever. Amen. <clears throat> oh, God. When I was a kid, boy, I had a big voice. My mother said I had a voice like a trumpet. But anyway... I wasted it out there trying to sing <clears throat> rock and roll. Don't you pay attention to that devil. Amen. Look what he almost did to that girl. Novato, whatever her name is. Huh? Look what he did to Elvis Presley. Uh-huh. Are you hearing me? Look what he did. Look what he does to all these people. Don't you believe it? And those of you that still like to God help you. Give that up. You look ridiculous doing it anyway. I mean, I could dance. I mean, Brother James Brown, they have nothing on me. <laughs> Amen. I mean, I'm telling you. But there's a lot of people that can't dance. I know. I played enough for dances and I played for fiestas and quinceañeras and you name it. Uh, and I could see that some people just, most people don't know how to dance. And when they come to church, they go like this. They, they got that white man's sickness. They can never keep... <laughs> you ever seen Brother Elmer? He can't chew gum and walk at the same time. <laughs> no, but it's just one of those things, okay? I'm not trying to put anybody down, but anyway, we need to understand. When Jesus comes, he puts a pep in your step. When Jesus comes, things change. Hallelujah. You, you get a song in your heart, and, and, and you go around telling people how good you feel, and they don't understand you for nothing. But you feel good inside. Amen? I'm telling you the truth. Wonderful life in Christ. So obedience to Christ is necessary in order to... <clears throat> really actualize or realize the uh, operation of faith. Uh, it is an obedience of faith. Therefore, faith and obedience cannot be separated. A good scripture to look up is Romans 6.26 when you get a chance. Saving faith without the commitment to sanctification is impossible. That's why this church is in the mess it's in. The modern church is that it's getting all that preaching and all that stuff. And guess what happens? Their lives don't change. Their appetites don't change. They still go to the theaters and they want to dance and the music of the world gets them going. You haven't changed if that's you. When I come to church, you're going to see me up here. I'm going to be doing something with, express to the Lord, even with my body. You know, I'm not going to get ridiculous, but I, I'm going to, you know, because I'm alive. The Spirit of God is in me. 
But when the music of the world comes around, I don't rock and roll no more. Hello, I don't, I don't, I don't groove anymore. Amen. I'm telling you. But some people just don't understand. They can't tell the difference between one and the other. Let me just say it plainly here. Because I need to deliver some people this morning. There is a music of the world. Are you hearing me? Yes. Say it. There's a music of the world. And that music is enticing music. And it is directed because it is essential to awaken your, 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 your carnal self. You hear me? Then there is a music that we use to worship God. You know, I know people say, well, all music is of the Lord. No, it's not. No, it's not. There's music that is, that is for the Lord. Where we express our love and helps us, our spirits, praise and worship the Lord. I had a, the drummer of the, uh, what was that old band? Striper. He was here. So we got into a little argument, him and I. <clears throat> and I said, how can you be out there and this and that? And you think, you're wrong, dude. He said, but after the concert, we throw out a bunch of New Testaments. I go, oh, yeah? Is that, you think that's, think that's what Jesus would do? No, I think Jesus would call them to repentance, first of all. So anyway, he didn't stay here too long, so he moved on. You understand what I'm saying? People think that, you know, that's not what we're talking about here. Remember Elvis Presley? Every time he did a sacred music, whatever. He had a group at the end. They would sing till the midnight hour singing gospel songs. He was convicted in his heart because he was raised in the Assembly of God Church. His mama loved the Lord, but he never really got saved. I'm telling you the truth. I know preachers that went to talk to him. A lot of these people, a lot of these people, they want to honor God with whatever. I heard the other day that, you know, people like uh, the Kardashians and and that little cute boy, what's his name? Uh, huh? Justin Fieber? Whatever. And people like that, they go to this church, you know, to the hill song, whatever. You see, they think it's the same thing, you see, because they do these concerts and they got the lasers and they got the funk. They think it's all that funky stuff, you know what I mean? I have a friend and we were talking together. He's a black brother. He's a preacher too. And he was telling me, he says, in this church, and I know the pastor and he's a bishop with the with the church organization. And he said, oh yeah, he says, you know, Magic Johnson goes there and, and, uh, the lady from the Pips and, uh, and, and, and Demsel Washington and cause they give money, a lot of millions in money. I said, oh yeah? Well, I'd like to meet Demsel Washington and wash his mouth out with soap. It was what I seen him say on some of these, uh, shorts that they show on TV. He, he ain't worshiping God when he does that. And I don't care if they want to separate and say, well, well, that's my profession and that's for real. I don't care. Hello? You know, we need to make a difference, folks. The Lord said, come out from among them. And there's going to be a separation. We're going to have faith in Christ. I know this is not a popular message and this is not what people want to hear. Because they want to just, you know, go along to get along. But that's not what Jesus said. Jesus compared and made contrast. He even said one time, if you don't love you, and don't love me more than you love mother and father, you're not worthy of me. Yeah, you need to, people need to think of that. And I, I, when God touched my life, I was ready to give it all up because I had tried it all. I had been there. You can't tell me about anything about whatever. I've been there. When Jesus came and filled my heart with joy and peace and love, I'm telling you, I've never, well, anyway, some guy said I got saved. I never got over it. <clears throat> well, that's the way I feel. I'm still, I mean, I'm just thankful today for what God has done and what God has done in your life. If you're really saved, God has changed your life. You're not what um, perhaps you should be, but you're not what you used to be. There's got to be some progress. You got to be maturing. Sanctification means becoming saints, separated. 
Faith includes a heartfelt personal devotion and attachment to Jesus Christ that expresses itself in trust, in love, in gratitude, and loyalty. That means faithfulness. Boy, we have a problem with loyalty and faithfulness today. For some reason, people can't seem to attend two services in a row. Like it's below them. I don't know. I'm just trying to be very plain to you this morning. But but nevertheless, we need to understand what God demands. What God wants. And But we made it too easy, Brother Munsey. That's why people can hang. In the world, they don't think much of you if you can hang. So why we Christians are different. We've got to we've got to hang with Christ. We've got to hang. You know, when I accepted Christ, I gave him my all. I, I meant for real. I meant, hey, come on. Amen. I didn't want guys that were hanging with me that would not hang, that would not stay there. If they ran at the, at the sign of trouble, I didn't want them with me. It's for the duration, right? But today, everything's so temporary, everything's missed, so happened, so, you know, that people are like that. People go into marriage, like, thinking, okay, if I don't like it, I can always divorce her. And so marriages last a year, two years, three years, whatever. And when I tell people I've been married 51 years and I'm going to 52, they go, hey, what? How old are you? I said, a thousand years. Oh, no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. But, you know, people just, Brother Elmer, you've been married 60-some years. Wow. You're going to get a special medal in heaven. <clears throat> right? But people today know. They're 30 years old. They're going to a third marriage already. God help us. Did a service with a dear lady last week and all those children have different fathers and everything, and she wasn't even 40 years old. Isn't it something? God help us. God help us to teach our children that, hey, don't be in a hurry to get married, but when you get married, it's for good, Divina. Make sure. Amen. And don't give him no honey until he signs on the dotted line. No sugar. Hello there. Yeah. Boys will tell girls, oh, if you love me, you let me. Yeah, right. Yeah, pay the rent and the bills and everything first. Are you hearing me? This overused word. Oh, he's my fiancé. Fiancé, my foot. He's the guy in your sack. That's what he is. They don't even know what they're talking about. God help us, church. We need to show the world the truth, the real life. What's going to please God because one day he's coming back and he's coming for a church without spite or wrinkle. He's coming for a holy people. A people that have turned their back on the world and are willing to follow the Lord Jesus Christ regardless of the prize. When I started preaching, I didn't come to win a popularity contest. I could have because everybody thought I was, you know, God's great man of faith and whatever. And God did use me in the mighty way. <clears throat> but I didn't come to please people. I could have been a clown and have more people than came to the church. Right. That's right. That's true. So don't forget. Faith is ultimately expressed as a great love towards the Savior and His church. Constantly reaching out to lost humanity. You said it right, Brother Gabriel. Let's consider grace here as I try to wind this down. Because we have communion this morning. Grace. In the Old Testament, God revealed himself as a God of grace. Who showed us his love and showed and manifested his love to his people. Basically Israel. Not because they deserved it. But because of his own desire to be faithful to the wonderful promises that he made to the patriarchs. Basically Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Because of these promises. And 
Some of them can be seen, for example, in the celebration of Passover. God was faithful there. And he always told them, I am the God who brought you for the land of Egypt and the house of bondage. And then the Day of Atonement also was another great, uh, great uh, celebration. And God was faithful. You see, let me just plainly tell you that justice is getting what we deserve. Amen? Mercy is being spared what we deserve. Grace is being given what we don't deserve. Amen. By the tape, it'll sound the same. The New Testament emphasizes the theme of God's grace in the giving of His only begotten Son. That's why John 3.16 is very well known and a favorite of many people. But He gave His Son on behalf of undeserving sinners. You see, God's grace is imparted to us by the Holy Spirit to do God's will, to live for God. The whole movement of the Christian life from beginning to end, my friends, is dependent on God's grace. Everything is grace, for by grace, by grace, through grace. You were saved by great, by the grace of God. Amen. Amen. God gives a measure of grace as a gift to unbelievers so that they may be able to Believe in Jesus and be saved. God gives us grace to believers to make us free and keep us free from sin. And also to perform his will. Because the Bible says to do of his good pleasure. To do of his good pleasure. To will and to do a gift of God's grace. Matthew emphasized this. In Matthew seven twenty one, he says, Not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, shall enter in, but he that what? Doeth the will of God. That's so important. People say they're going to go to heaven. They're not doing God's will. How is he going to get there? You're not even obeying the Lord. We talked in Sunday school about the great commandment, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart. I said to my class, My, I could preach like this forever because I don't know if I'll ever be able to accomplish that or bring or persuade people to truly love God with all their hearts because love is the foundation for everything we do. Serve God. Everything. I mean, First Corinthians 13 tells you you don't have love and you doing all these things, you ain't nothing. You're just a noisemaker. People, the Lord didn't come to call noisemakers. He came to call believers. Disciples that would follow him. Jesus emphatically taught that carrying out the will of his heavenly father was a condition of entering the kingdom of heaven. God's grace must be diligently desired and sought after. It just doesn't happen, friends. Some of the way means of grace by which God wants us to serve him are received also by this wonderful grace of God that involves studying and obeying scriptures. Let me ask you a question here as I close this morning. In these past 68 hours of this week, how many hours or minutes did you spend studying and reading the scriptures? I don't care if you went and did all kinds of other things. How much time do you spend in the Word of God? See, it is in the Word of God where God speaks to us. Where we have fellowship with Him. See, this is the written Word. Jesus is the living Word. But it's one and the same. You want to know what God wants you to do? Just get into this Word and He'll tell you. He'll speak to you. That's why many people don't get into the Word because they don't want to. Hear God tell him what you're doing is wrong and you shouldn't be doing that and you shouldn't be judging. You shouldn't be, you know, talking bad about this or hating that or whatever. Are you hearing me? We have to even change the vocabulary. Vocabulary. My wife had a problem and I probably too, but we said, oh, I hate this. I hate that. I said, babe, we're going to have to stop using that word. You can't be hating everything. You can say, I don't like it very much. I dislike it. 
<laughs> you know? So there are those kind of things that we need to. So we make a pact to help each other. So we can make sure. Because see, the Holy Spirit is there. The Holy Spirit's presence is always with us. No, you're not. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of God lives within you. It's important. So spending time in the Word of God, God looks very tenderly upon that moment. When you take time of your busy schedule, don't try to impress God with your fancy footwork or what you did for that or what you gave away. That doesn't, that's, anybody can do that. But how many love the Word of God? How many love to spend time with the Lord? That's where the acid test is. What you're going to do? Blessed is the man who meditates in the word of God both day and night. He shall be like the tree planted by the streams of water. See, it does things to you. Love David and all through Psalm 119. Oh, how I love thy word. Oh, how I love thy precepts. They are my meditation all the day long and on and on. Why don't we fall in love with Jesus? Why don't we truly embrace the Lord once and for all? Why don't we grow in the grace of God? How about praying? How about praying and fasting? Worshiping the Lord, being filled with the Spirit, and participating, as we're going to do this morning, in the Lord's table. See, all of these things. As a Christian, even when I first got saved, nobody was telling me I had to do this, do that. No, I just, in my heart, and as I prayed and I spent time with the Lord, He told me what to do. So I, I couldn't, I couldn't stay away from church. If I knew there was service in my church, I was there. I was there in Sunday school. I'm still teaching Sunday school 40 some years later. It's okay with me. I love it. I've learned so much of the Word of God. Prayer. You don't have to tell me that I have to pray. I pray all the time. <clears throat> I said last week, the reason why I don't pray when I come to preach, like some preachers do, because I don't need to try to look spiritual before you. Because if I didn't spend at least an hour in prayer in my private closet before I come here before you, I would not stand up here before you. If I haven't prayed, a 30 second prayer ain't going to help me much. Hello? I'm not trying to be difficult or how can I say hard or whatever or crazy or weird. I just, I think it's time that we just, we relate the way we are. I believe preachers need to get down and, and start seeing things what they are. So that people out there, when we go inviting them, say, no, I don't go to church because, you know, people in the church are kind <clears> of, <throat> you know, I mean, or, or they shut the door on you and you're bringing them good news. You want to help them? Thank God that Joe accepted the invitation of Brother Louie. I hope he's going to buy you lunch at least. You know what I mean? I'm glad. I don't know what brought these folks all the way from Redlands, but they come. They love the Lord. I'm sure they do. They would not do all that. I'm sure that Joyce loves the Lord. And you that are here, and you that are here for the first time, and even this lady in the wheelchair. Was she at the house where my mother used to go? When my mother was alive, there's fruit. My mother's, you know, ministry. And now there's two more daughters and, and more children. Amen. Isn't God good, folks? Shouldn't we serve the Lord with gladness? Shouldn't we give him ourselves? None of us have suffered like Christ suffered. None of us has suffered unto blood. Why can't we just be faithful to him? Why can't we just love him? Why can't we just have great respect towards the Lord, his house, whatever he has told us to do? David said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than dwell in the tents of Las Vegas or wherever, whatever that was. Are you hearing me? 
See how plain I'm being? I don't pull any punches. I don't have nothing to pretend. The church pays me enough, so you don't have to worry about that. I won't be asking for another raise for a long time. I was talking to my name, my nephew up in, and he's a music teacher, I mean, music person, Rachel. He started a lot of groups and helped churches. He's, he's a magician with a, with a keyboard. But he quit not too long ago because he had a heart attack and other things. And we was in the church and go, well, what happened to the gift? What are you going to do with it? By the way, we're going to be needing another bass player because we're losing our brother, Jesse. He's going to become a hillbilly in the hills of Idaho. <laughs> I was admitted to a university up there, and he's going to learn about the outdoors. He has fallen in love. See what you started, Brother Gabriel? You took him deer hunting, and now you got this kid all, well, okay, that's on you. And he's going to learn how to be a, who knows, he'll be a conservative, he's going to be a, you know, forest ranger, who knows. But anyway, pray. But anyway, we, we have a, a base here that, you know, needs a player. Um, anyway, that was just a commercial. So, <laughs> praise the Lord. Are you happy you came to church? Yeah. I'm, I'm glad you came to church. I'm glad you came. Please stand quietly to your feet. I want to invite the brothers to come who are going to minister at the table of the Lord. And then once we do this, then friends, you're going to be free to go home, have a good lunch, and, and make plans to come back and be with us this evening <clears throat> so that you can hear from Brother Randy and, and Sister Yolanda and also Alan. What is your last, what is your last name, Mauricio? Salinas. <laughs> and this brother's coming from Salinas, California. How about that? That's cool. That's really cool. Amen. Uh, gentlemen, aren't you guys getting ahead of me a little bit? No? Okay, I'll forgive you this time, but usually you wait till I pray over the emblems and then. But anyway, you go ahead and pass them out. Come on. Lead us, brother. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away, it was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. At the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Was it? That I have done He grown up on the tree Amazing pity, grace unknown And love beyond degree At the cross, at the cross Where I first saw the light and the 
the cross, at the, at the cross, cross where I first saw the light, and the pain of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. Father in heaven, this morning, as we receive this cup and this bread, Lord, we pray you bless it, Father. May it truly be a reminder of that which you did for us 2,000 years ago. Lord, may every heart here this morning be surrendered to you. May everyone here this morning believe that it was the work of Jesus on the cross that saved sinners like us. Lord Jesus, help us. To maintain that faith, dear God, that faith that you gave us to believe that the shed blood of Jesus and his body on the cross delivered us from sin and shame and from destruction and opened up the doors of heaven for everyone to be able to come in and receive forgiveness of sins and the assurance of eternal life. Father, touch every individual, we pray. We give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And he said unto them, With desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. This is the Lord Jesus speaking before they would celebrate the last Passover he spent with them. And he took the cup and he gave thanks and he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread right from the table and gave gave thanks and he broke it and gave it unto them saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Let us eat the bread together. Don't be afraid to chew it because it represents the broken body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Also, we must understand that we need to become broken bread to the nations, to the unsaved, that they might receive life. Likewise, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. And Paul in Corinthians he said to the Corinthians in chapter 15 that he was giving them what he received from the Lord before the Lord would suffer. When he said, as often as you eat the bread and drink the cup, you do show forth, you announce the Lord's death until he comes. Friends, he's coming again. In full assurance of faith, let us then drink the cup together and be thankful. Amazing grace, oh how sweet the sound that saved a rich life me.
there someone here this morning that has said yes to Jesus? You made your mind you're going to follow the Lord? Is there someone here? Just lift your hand right where you are. Don't embarrass you. God bless you, young man. Let me put it down. Someone else, you made up your mind to follow the Lord, to serve the Lord. No matter what the world says, what the world has to offer, you're going to follow Jesus. God bless you, young man. God loves you. And if you have not made up your mind, determine in your heart, you're going to serve the Lord. Serve the Lord with gladness. He's done so much for us. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Isn't God good? Yes, He is. Don't forget to come back here at 6 o'clock again. We're going to be looking for you. Amen.